Okay, so here are Mr. Steve O'Jerry. First time in Brazil. Steve, thank you very much for having us just before the show. It's great to be here. And uh, of course, we have a couple of minutes before the show. And we're very excited. But I'm always happy to talk to you guys. And uh, that's why I'm here, to, to spread the word that I'm back. And I've got some new music coming out. And we just wanted to come, my, my, some of my, half of my band and, and half uh, wonderful Brazilian musicians. We're going to play a great show. And we want to spread the good music, spread the good word. to a little bit about your whole career because you just recorded an album back with Tall Stories which is your first band and I wanted to know you know when you recorded the first one the first Tall Stories album and then do you think the band got like uh, a bit harmed in that whole terrible grunge thing because you had a major label deal with Epic it harmed is a I don't know if this is the right word music was changing sure. and uh, and we were not necessarily, well, we weren't a grunge band. So um, we weren't necessarily this, an ordinary band, I don't think. I think we had something special, but I think we got caught yeah, in, exactly. in a group, in a, in a big tidal wave that sucked all, the, all these good melodic rock bands down the, down the drain. So, you know, that's life. There, sometimes you win and sometimes you lose. So, uh, but uh, we, we didn't have, we had a good ride. We had a, an opportunity to go on tour with Mr. Big, and we um, we had a great time getting out, getting our music out, and and we, we it's the first time we went and traveled around the United States, so it was still a lot of fun. We did we did pretty good, although yeah. although it wasn't a great success. Sure. It was it was a, a a mild and minor success, and we were very content. <laughs> And then you went, we played with Taiketo also in the Shine album. And uh, it's a very different album in the Taiketo discography because like, I guess when you joined and you were playing Zeppelin here, That's right. it was, it's such a Zeppelin-esque album and your voice is so Robert Plant. It's so different from what David Vaughan used to sing. Right, right. Well, what happened was uh, it was never meant to be a Taiketo record. And so um, it was going to be an entirely different, a brand new entity. Uh, with a brand new name, and um, at the very last minute, the record company got cold feet, and they didn't want to release it as a new band. They thought there would be more success with the old name, which, which, if it were, if it sounded like an, a Chiquetto record, they would be right. But it was entirely yes, different music, exactly, yes. so it confused uh, the fans. At the very least, it confused them. Uh -huh. It might have even pissed them off. Right? <laughs> And we never, we never meant to do that because, uh, but that's what you know, that's what happened. It was unfortunate, and so uh, it was, a, it was a stepping stone for my next venture with Journey. You know, it uh, sure. it, it taught me a valuable lesson that uh, when I did step into the situation, that there was a sound of the band, and there was uh, sure. which Steve had left a legacy. And you needed to follow in the same direction as opposed to doing an entire different thing. Yeah, sure. So I learned that very valuable lesson working with Taiketo. Great. I didn't know this story. Cool. And uh, you, you just mentioned Steve. And did you have him as, a, as an influence when you were growing up as Steve Perry? Definitely Steve. And, and, and Steve would probably say the same. We were both influenced by uh, soul, music. Sam, well, soul music. And, and for me in particular, Sam Cooke, my dad, used to play soul records I was a child and uh, when I first heard Journey and I heard Steve's voice I thought with this rock and roll music and behind I said oh man I can really it talked to me it spoke to my heart and uh, it related to me and you know that's as simple as that is this no, it's not very complicated And of course, when you got the call from Journey, it was, I can't imagine, a very, it was very, you were very thrilled. And that's, 
But do you remember, you know, the first show, if you got butterflies on your stomach, you know, first show with Journey? Yeah, the very first show was, uh, it was, it was for friends and family. And, um, yeah, I remember uh, about an hour before the show, or right before the show, I, I got, uh, I found a garbage can and I got pretty, <laughs> I got physically sick. I got over, I composed myself, went out, and it was, uh, it was uh, a life-changing event. But the, the most, the, the big emotional moment was in, my, in the audience I had my son and my wife and I looked out, they were somewhere in the middle and we caught eyes and we connected and in the middle of separate ways I started crying, my you know, tears started flowing down my eyes because it was a, hap you know, a, a, a cry of happiness and, you know, and it was a beautiful thing so uh, that was my first show and it was, uh, it was very memorable. Yeah, I can't imagine that. And of course, I gotta, I gotta ask you that. Uh, Sweden Rock 2006, I was at the show, first row. I even got Neil's pick that day. That day, I'm a big Journey fan, and it's one of my favorite bands. So it's a big thrill to talk to. Uh, why do you think that those vicious and mean rumors started out that you were lip syncing? Because you were not lip syncing. I was, I was like this distance from you. You were not lip syncing. Why everybody started talking about it? Let me put it to you this way: there, in certain rumors. There's always a little bit of truth, but that little bit can turn into a big tidal wave. So uh, all I can say, I have uh, that particular day, I happened to have been very sick and I had been getting over an illness, which took a number of years to get over, which I'm happy to say I'm over now. And, uh, and I'm just happy to be back and, and, and singing for you tonight in Brazil for the very first time. And just to wrap it up, uh what are your future plans? You're going to record an album, be a new band? We're recording and we're uh, mixing now. And we're planning on maybe not releasing a record right away, but releasing a single every so often, every two weeks or every month, until we've accumulated 12 songs and then we're going to put it out in a collection. And I just think it would be fun like that. I think uh, to put out the record, you'd have to wait another six months, maybe a year. Why not put out a song tomorrow? Sure! Would you yeah. like that? Yeah. <laughs> oh, just uh, just another question that uh, I remember. You're still in touch with the guys on Journey. You yes, have no hard feelings as a, at all. As a matter of fact, uh, Ross called me. We were on the plane on the way to here to Brazil, and uh, I got a phone call from him. So, you, you know, we we speak now and then, and you know, there's a lot of his there's a lot of history. I love Panetta. I think he's he's got a, a, a wonderful voice, and I, I there's a lot of me when I see him. I see. A part of me, yeah. him doing what what he's doing, and uh, and I I always wish them all the best, and I and I wish them all the best as well. Well, I wish you all the best. Thank you very much for this interview. I really really loved. It. It's a great pleasure. pleasure. It's a great pleasure. Great to be here in Brazil. It's